Hi everyone, thank you for joining our session today. My name is Corinna. My name is Patrick. And today we're going to talk about building disruptive platforms by rewriting legacy applications. And don't worry if you don't have a legacy application at hand. A new inspiring idea will also do the job. Over the last years, we worked together with customers from different industries to build various platforms, mostly in the context of the cloud transformation. Many customers see this platform journey as a great opportunity to accelerate their overall digitization strategy, to realize additional business potential, and to improve their engineering culture. Even though this talk would have also somehow qualified for the culture track, we see this more as a summary of multiple platform stories, which we boil down to a brief overview of experiences, recommendations, and lessons learned. So let us take the cloud case, for example. Imagine somebody told you, hey, go ahead and execute your cloud strategy and build a platform. So your team starts now to create a new platform. What is, from our experience, the most important success factor? Picking a lighthouse, which will help you to build an amazing platform, which you can then scale and continuously improve. Today's presentation is only a timely appetizer. We would like to encourage you to talk to us over Slack, discuss your experiences, and ask your questions that might pop up during the presentation. And now Corinna will tell you more about the potential start of your journey. So why a lighthouse? If you don't have a product, building a platform is incredibly difficult. You will always have to make assumptions about potential requirements, and reality is, Implementations will sometimes work or not work. If they are complex and not tested, chances are high that they will not work. Thereby, pick a lighthouse and prove the ability to execute. Make informed decisions in a timely manner. Learn, experiment, build muscles. Fail fast, do more, plan less. Mind the bystanders and the skeptics. A lighthouse can shine into the organization and set an example for a new way of working and architectural proof point. So this presentation is based on the observation that it can be incredibly difficult to build a product, or in our case a platform, without getting feedback from the earliest point in time. So we decided to focus on a lighthouse-based approach. So how to pick my lighthouse? Either you already have an idea, then use methods like design thinking to rapidly test your hypothesis. Or you already have a refined idea or possibly a demand, such a system to be retired. Then check if the business value is high enough to get the necessary stakeholder attention, but at the same time being achievable. And what do you need for the flower magic? You plant the seeds for a great engineering culture with fast and effective decision making. Create a cross-functional team in a psychological safe space and then go ahead and set technology guardrails. Then you water the seeds and wait for it to grow. Ta-da! You can see the flower magic. All your seeds have developed into a great lighthouse team solving for a first round of cultural and technological proof points, which can be leveraged across the organization while scaling. Now, a big shout out at this time so one of the key success factors, what we have experienced, is go beyond agile. So everything is a subject to change. Every decision and problem is a feature. So go for the daily, even hourly decision loops, considering different trade-offs based on the principles and your strategy. And one example for that is architectural decision records. And now, which teams do I need? You need an app team, which creates fast business value. And you need a cloud platform team, which serves the app team. So how to set up my team? You need a cross-functional team. And the app team serves the end user. And the platform team serves the app team user. So the change is constant. A product owner is representing the user. And instead of fixed deadlines and milestones, there are only backlogs of user stories and sprints. DevOps, Agile, and Site Reliability Engineering build the foundation of practices you need for success. Build them reliable enough, build the right features, and build them quickly. For example, an error budget prioritizes stability versus new feature development. So now, how to get started? 
Let us get the foundation ready so we can look into scaling later. So start developing your engineering excellence guidelines. For example, 100% automation, API first, 100% self-service, security by design or zero trust. Then go ahead and automate everything. Now your app team requirements starts coming in. Besides the necessities, they will determine your backlog prioritization. Do not already build for everyone, build for them, but keeping of course the technical debt in mind. So here's the loop back to the informed decision making what we talked about earlier. So now you have the first iteration of your platform ready. Now establish the connectivity to your dependencies. Otherwise, you only build a non-meaningful Beanfield platform. But overall, we need to stress the importance of speed, especially in the early days. Go for speed. The platform team is incredibly important for success, but sadly also a big candidate to become a bottleneck. So now I will hand over to Patrick, who will talk more about scaling. Let's now talk about the scalability phase. The first question that you might have right now is, when does the scalability phase start? To be honest, there's no perfect answer to this question, but we can usually say there are some requirements that should be fulfilled. So your platform team should have found a stable working mode in which they can operate the platform and also work on improvements. In addition, the majority of the requirements from the Lighthouse should be in place to ensure that they can continue working without having exclusive attention from the platform team. Of course, there are also additional changes that come with this phase. You can see that the platform team is not exclusively coupled to the Lighthouse teams anymore. They will also work with the additional app teams that are onboarded to the platform. It's important to say that we not yet open the platform to all customers, but that we try to naturally scale. It might also make sense to set up a platform strategy team which takes care of things like demand management or budgets and other topics that you don't want to add to the shoulders of your app or platform teams. It's also time to focus on two very important characteristics for your platform, autonomy and automation. To not restrict our users too much, we should always pay attention to autonomy. The one thing we want to avoid is putting new use cases at risk just because they don't fit into the restrictions of our platform. We don't want to be blockers for new ideas, we actually want to be enablers. On the other side, automation is key when it comes to onboarding new teams to our environment. It should be as easy as possible to work with the platform and therefore we should offer proper functionalities to make that happen. We are talking about things such as self-service catalogs, templates and other building blocks that can be reused. When we see our platform journey as opportunity to improve our engineering culture, we also need to make sure it can scale when we onboard new teams. Of course, we can't and we don't want to enforce a certain culture, but we can help the new teams to develop their culture by having people from the Lighthouse and platform teams join the new application teams. Another idea could be the creation of a culture guild, which is open to everyone who is actively interested in improving the engineering culture. Sometimes you might face the challenge that new potential app teams are hesitant to move their workloads to the platform, especially in the early stages. Many people just don't want to be the second or third mover for our platform. So our job is to build trust by being transparent. This can be done by organizing office hours, having a transparent communication, availability of roadmaps, walk-in days, hackathons, and other ideas that you might have. If you scale naturally, and as soon as people become familiar with the environment, you'll see that there will be more teams realizing how awesome this platform is and that they want to build new use cases on top of it. While they are working with the platform, they will also be happy because of the new culture and everything that comes from the outside. The amount of proof points and reusable components, components will also go up significantly. Only because we are now having multiple product teams working with our platform, this doesn't mean our job is done. Ultimately, our platform needs to become a true enabler for our customers. And by that, we don't just mean that people can use our platform to develop and run new products, but they can really do things better because of our platform. We want to make their lives easier so they can build technologically more advanced products, that they can focus more on the tasks they actually like doing, and that our platform really inspires them to build something truly amazing to also boost our business. But to make that happen, we might need to start a paradigm shift. One of the most important things is that you should not treat the platform as a one-off project, because it's not. 
We've observed multiple scenarios in which the platform has been seen that way, and it almost always caused major problems in the long run. Who is responsible for it after the project plan is finished? How do you plan budget for a project that has been completed? Who is going to be responsible for operations? And most importantly, how do we want to ensure continuous improvement is in place? Let's face it, our platform is never finished. We know that our customers' expectations and ambitions, as well as the potential technical possibilities we identify evolve, which always opens up new exciting feature opportunities for our platform. And because our customers never rest, we cannot measure the success of our platform at one specific point in time. We cannot say after our waterfall implementation plan is completed or at the first time we achieve metric X, we're done. We need to ensure that we continuously meet our customers' expectations and fulfill our technical responsibilities. To achieve that, let's look at potential focus areas. The first one is the more customer-centric goals. You can use the Haas framework, for example, to cover the different aspects of your customer satisfaction. On the other hand, you have the technology-centric goals, such as engineering excellence guidelines you've developed during your journey, the DORA framework, or best practices from SRE. But it's important that you really ace both categories, because if you only ace one, there's a very good chance that your platform won't be successful in the long run. Another scenario that will at some point occur is that more people will want to go on your platform. That's the point where you really open it for all the people who have business cases they want to realize. There's one hidden trap here. And that's when that happens, you really have to make sure that you can support all these workloads from the people side as well as from the technical side. You have to look at scalability, for example, resource management, and other things. So let's continue with some additional lessons learned before we say goodbye. The first one, platform building is not a drawing contest. So you can design a lot of things on paper, but ultimately you will only know if it's going to work when you get your hands dirty. And we recommend doing that early. Also, don't lose yourself in demo-driven development. Of course, the expectations are high when you build something, something great like a new platform. But if you always develop things that are only there to satisfy the key stakeholders, there's a very high risk that you won't actually drive progress in the way you should be doing it. You should also approach technology from the use case and not the other way around. It doesn't make sense to take hype technologies and then try to force your use cases into these technologies because sometimes it just doesn't work. And last but not least, many decisions can be automated so don't hesitate to build something like governance as code and to hand out some guardrails to your engineering teams that they know in which environment they can operate, what the guardrails are. OK. Are you still interested in some additional content? Then go on the links below. Let us recap. The question was, what is a great way to build a platform? The answer is, build a platform for users with business needs based on a lighthouse. Go for speed and fast decisions. Let the lighthouse do the scaling magic for you and go for excellence. A product is never finished. Now we are done with the appetizer. So how to get started? Either contact Patrick or myself or your Google representative or contact us on Slack. Thank you so much. Thank you.